All right, it's time to learn about taking Mr. Potato Head with you for a better story writing. You can turn to page 53 in your VM and follow along and just listen, or you can follow along on the screen and have me read to you. Anyways, this is a great way to add description to your stories and your scripts. So what better way than to think of Mr. Potato Head? One of the best tips I've ever seen working revealing details into a story came from a reporter who takes the moment while reporting every story writes the word texture at the top of the notebook page and starts writing down what he senses, what his senses are telling him. Not all the details make every story, but his reporting allows him to build every story from a richer trove of raw material, details that build pictures in the reader's minds. Here's another tip that can help you remember to report for revealing detail. Try building Mr. Potato Head. It sounds a bit silly, but it works if you look at it this way. Each of the spudster's parts can stand for one of your senses or some aspect of on the scene. If you can assemble all the parts, you fill your notebook with the level of detail that can make the story jump off the page. The idea first occurred when I was planning a critique of a deadline storytelling package on a fatal steel pan explosion in northwest Indiana. Writers, editors, and I sat down and tried to build a spudster with clues gathered from the published stories. As good as their work was, it was essentially a collection of scenes. They were surprised at the details they'd missed on or the sensory clues they hadn't provided readers. It helped them recognize how they could do better next time. Here are the parts of what they can mean. The feet. For getting to the scene. If you report the bulk of your stories by phone, go ahead and turn to another page. This isn't for you. You can't report for a revealing detail if you're not willing to go to the scene, no matter how humble the story. The eyes. Visual clues. Think of the old admonition, show, don't tell. This can be a quick snapshot provided on deadline or a rich tapestry of images woven into a feature story. For example, here's a snippet from a fire at a historic church covered by the Wichita Heat. As the pastor spoke, grayish-brown smoke billowed overhead. The mist from the firefighters' hoses sprayed the back of his neck. Dozens of firefighters, paramedics, police, and reporters scurried around the building. Amid the chaos, Chittam agreed and embraced his parishioners. The nose. Smells. This is something you'll seldom find in newspaper stories, even descriptive pieces, but it can be a powerful scene-building tool. It's a natural for fires, which have its distinctive odors. Here's how Jenny Upchurch and Eagle used it in a story about a house, a house explosion. Sedgwick County Fire Marshal Gary Thompson said Sunday that the explosion cause has not been determined, but a propane tank leak is the most likely possibility. The Sattlers first noticed the smell after work late Friday. It was like someone had dumped a lot of broccoli down the kitchen sink disposal. The ears. Sound clues. Another example from the church story. As the firefighters spot the blaze, water cascaded down the tile roof like a waterfall. Clumps of the red clay shingles clacked together as they dropped. The hands. Tactile clues. What things feel like to the touch or underfoot. This can be a tough one. It's a visual clue and then some and it's seldom used, but it's well worth reporting. Here how, here's how Roy Wetzel of Eagle employed it in a story that took readers along the path of destruction left by a tornado. Hundreds of yards from the nearest house, we find a Bible. It lies in a field of wet grass on the northwest corner of 55th and South Center. The field is full of toys, clothes, aluminum, and upside-down pickup with a crushed cab that must have flown many hundreds of yards. The Bible is big, three inches thick, nine inches long, and brick heavy with rainbow. Some pages are torn. Whole chapters of Deuteronomy and Ezekiel are glued forever together. New and Old Testaments are filled with blades of God's green print. The mouth. Quotes. Not just any old lip flapping, but quotes that fill in mind and move the story. Dialogue is best, even in short form. Another church fire example. Several parishioners cheered when a worker carried out a black and public address to some console, set it on the church steps, and announced that it apparently had survived the blaze. Speakers? Chinnam asked. No, the worker said, as he turned and went back inside. He returned a few minutes later with a charred piece of wood and metal that once had been his. As you can see, this sort of revealing detail can be easily gathered with a little fault. For some writers, it'll take some practice before the thinking becomes a natural part of reporting at the scene. Others already use detail deftly, but sometimes pass up a chance to add a bit more choice to the palette. So, if it helps you remember, take Mr. Ben Potato Head along in your mind the next time you're out. You won't have to tell anybody you play with the doll, and he just might help 